Jason, uh, Oklahoma being what it is, a blue blood, and having the expectations that um, that don't change generally. So if I guess if you want to get very specific about the definition of expectation versus standard. The standard never changes. Win the Big 12, then move on from there and compete for a national championship. Then, of course, there are expectations that might um, increase or decrease slightly, slightly, depending on the evaluation by knowledgeable football fans and media, and, of course, certainly within the campus on how good they're going to be or should be any particular year. Uh, is there just so much talk about this team competing for a national championship this year that you think if Oklahoma has a typical year, and I'll outline that as win the Big 12 championship, go to the playoff, lose, and I'm not going to name a score, but let's say it's not anything egregious. It's it's losing by a touchdown or two scores in a competitive football game, but not taking any kind of tangible next steps do you think that's going to be a disappointment to most Oklahoma fans? I think, you know, if, you, if you're going through a prototypical season and, you know, you don't have a lot of injuries specifically to major players, you don't have, you know, you don't have kids, you know, that are, you know, not happy and leave the program. You don't have any internal, you know, turmoil and things like that. You know, all things kind of being even, the team is the way that we, you know, is the way that we think that they are going to be now, I would say, yes, I think the expectations are at the very least to win a playoff game. I, you know, you know, and I think you made, you made the point perfectly. I think the expectation, the standard is there, but I think the expectations fluctuate just a little bit year, um, year in and year out. I think going into the season last year, I, I think a, a Big 12 championship was going to be a successful season, particularly after the way they started. You know, you have a, you have a new quarterback that was didn't come in early, didn't get a spring, and basically got a couple of weeks to be ready, um, you know, to be a starting quarterback. You know, you had so many, you know, you had so many injuries on the wide receiver and the running back side. You know, you still had a defense that was a little bit unproven. Certainly they improved in 2019, but, you know, wasn't quite sure on what you would get, especially with no spring and kind of a, you know, a, a weird or an odd fall, you know, fall camp. So I think the expectations were there maybe to bit win a big 12 championship and then, you know, see, see what happens, but it's certainly elevated this year. I think, you know, anyone you talk to, especially when you get from a media perspective or fan perspective, I think realistic fans have to have to assume Oklahoma gets to the playoffs and wins a playoff game for it to be a successful season. You know, and, and you know, we've talked about several times how things happen. You, you got to be a little bit lucky sometimes from a from a matchup perspective. And, you know, you got to have some you, got, you know, you got to have some lucky bounces. You have to have some lucky things happen. You know, when Oklahoma won the national championship in 2000, they did not have one starter that missed any significant time from an injury perspective. So some of those things have to bounce your way, but if they have, you know, that if they don't have a whole lot of injuries, I think it's a team that would, it would be, you know, considered an unsuccessful season, even if that's, you know, they say they lose out to Alabama by seven points, you know, in the playoff game. I think that's the expectations that have went this far this year to, I mean, it's almost, you know, and I know this is, almost unrealistic, but it's, but it's almost national championship or bust uh, this season for this team. Mm. There you go. I would have to agree. I can't uh, disagree with anything I just heard. Uh, and, and that's a, that, that's a tough uh, deal, but uh, that's of course uh, the standard at the school and there's few like it um, because you own the conference and then you've got this 14 playoff and uh, they those games are tough to win. Those are tough to win. Jason and I got together to preview the spring game yesterday, and I outlined what it's looked like in terms of the Alabama-Clemson trifecta during this seven years of playoff, and it's tough to, to break um, those three, and uh, to beat one of those takes a colossal effort. Like, it's one thing to make the playoff 
Oregon's made the playoff. Oklahoma's made the playoff. Washington's made the playoff. And we could go down a list of a few other teams. It's a whole other thing to beat one of those teams in the playoff. Oklahoma almost did it in 2017. They were that close. Yeah, and I think, you know, and we, we go back, we certainly go back to the, to the, to the same thing with, with, with this team. And I think, you know, historically, it's always, um, it's always centered around the defense. You know, they, they scored, you know, with the exception of LSU, you know, they certainly, they were never really in that game. Um, but, but the, the other games, and you'll have to kind of spark my memory, they certainly scored enough to beat Georgia, certainly scored enough to beat Alabama. Uh, you know, in, in some of these games. So I think the defense has, has been the different difference maker that really didn't give Oklahoma an opportunity to, to win, or I wouldn't, I wouldn't say compete because, you know, obviously they were competitive against Georgia. I mean, it's debatable whether they were competitive or they were, um, you know, they, they competed well or they were ever in the game against Alabama. You know, Alabama came in and kind of punched them in the mouth early on and they didn't they didn't react well early on to that. But I think, you know, when they played LSU and when they played Alabama, both of those teams, they could have scored the, whatever amount of points that they wanted to score. So the difference is, can the Sooners do that on a big stage? against a big time offense and and I think the expectation defensively this year is probably top 15 you know if if Oklahoma can be a, a top 15 you know maybe top 20 defense and they need to be in a position where they can hold an Alabama a T or TC hold an Alabama hold a Clemson hold an Ohio State to 28 points you know, can they can they hold this these teams to you know 28, 31 points? And you got to you got to assume with how good Oklahoma has been offensively, if they're able to do that in a big time you know national championship playoff game, that will be enough to get them over the hump. Got Jason Ray on the line talking up Oklahoma football, and it looks like we've sparked uh, quite a bit of playoff type debate on who's good and who's not and who's going to compete for a national championship this year. And I certainly hope as Jason and I discussed yesterday that um, somebody breaks through and makes it a little bit more interesting, if not multiple teams across the nation as uh, again, Oklahoma finished up its spring session here today. And if you've got any comments, questions or anything else for Jason and myself, please leave them in the live chat. And uh, we will have Jason on on a regular basis as we head toward August camp. Uh, Jason, you almost home? No, not yet. I'm kind of setting, um, just setting park so I can so I can talk to you. I'm a little bit nervous about driving. And absolutely, doing, absolutely. Doing at the same time, so. I, I wondered about that. I didn't know. I did not know for sure. I uh, want to remind everyone as well is that uh, we will be covering spring practice across the nation as uh, there were more teams on the field today than at any other time. Texas and Tennessee tomorrow. I am looking at uh, North Carolina, Boston College, and somebody else, um, depending on how much I really want to watch more spring football as I DVR'd about nine games today. So we're not getting to nine of those, but uh, we'll see. I did watch Boston College and North Carolina as well as Texas A&M and the Aggies uh, video is posted. Well, Jason, I don't want to keep you any longer. I appreciate you stopping by and, uh, you know, delaying your trip home to talk Oklahoma football with us. Uh, you know that. So thank you so much for that. And again, Jason Ray, Last Word on College Football, so check out his work and the rest of the staff there at Last Word on College Football. All right, Jason, we'll see you next week. All right, thanks, Mark. Appreciate it.